Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We worship you tonight. We come expecting. We come receiving. And we pray tonight. Every mountain will get out of the way in Jesus' name. There will be a manifestation tonight. There will be a demonstration tonight. There will be an empowerment tonight. Lord, you will move in a mighty way in every life in Jesus' name. Touch everyone and help us to lay hold on your word. As we touch you and lay hold on your word. 12 years of infirmity. 38 years of infirmity. Long time standing problems. Tonight I confirm they are gone in Jesus name. Confirm your word in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Tonight I'm going to talk to you briefly. On God's explosive power today. You've heard he did it in Old Testament times in the Bible. He did in the New Testament in the Bible. The question is how about today? If you give God a chance in your life today, watch are the limits of what can happen today as we pray to the almighty God through the name of Jesus. The creator of the heavens and the earth. God with him all things are possible. He saves. He delivers. He heals. He provides. He turns life around. He changes all things, all people. That God that changes not. We pray to him in the name of Jesus. Jesus, the unchanging one. Jesus, the Savior and Lord. Jesus, the healer and the deliverer. God changes not. Jesus changes not the combination pray to the God who does not change in the name of Jesus that can never change and we come in the power of the Holy Ghost that remains the same today I'm reading to you from Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 For I am the Lord I change not It says I am That's all Moses had to face Pharaoh I am That's all Moses had to face The magicians of Egypt not I was, not I will be, I am the ever mighty powerful one. I am, that's all Moses had to divide the Red Sea. The great I am that I am. The almighty one. The omnipotent, all-powerful one. The omnipresent that is never absent anywhere we call his name. The mission that knows everything there is to know. The great I am that I am. He's been going with the people of God from the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, and all through. And now we come to the end of the old covenant. 
and he wants to assure everyone the same power that had ever been remains the same even until that time and he says I am the Lord I am Jehovah I am the El Shaddai I am the Almighty I am the All Sufficient I am the All Powerful I am the Lord and he says should anything whisper in your mind is this possible today can this be done today he says and I change not he comes to you with assurance he comes to you with the confidence he says I change not it's difficult for you to understand I change not but something should travel far away and then you've been away from uh, our place here for a long time and then you come back and you're wondering where you left your village where is the village now lo and behold the ground is not there it has not shifted you come to the other places that you knew before your old old alma mater your school school behold it's still there there's no change you look up the sun is still there where it used to be the moon is still there where it used to be and the ocean the seas are still there where they used to be God says come on now if the creation that I made with my hand changes not, how about the creator? I change not. That's why I'm telling you today. Whatever challenge you have there, there is a God of heaven, a God in heaven that changes not. I am the Lord. I change not. And then he tells us, he says, that is the reason why the people of God, the children of Israel, are not consumed. As we have that in the Old Testament. Because Malachi, you find in the Old Testament. We come to the New Testament now. And I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Have you read the story of Jesus? Everywhere he went, miracle power manifested. Have you read of Jesus? He raised the dead. He saved the sinner. He healed the sick. He opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to rise up and walk. He cast out devils and destroyed the powers of Satan. He calmed the stormy sea. He fed thousands with a few loaves of bread. And now he declares to you that every miracle you have seen in Bible days it says Jesus Christ I could have said Jesus without putting Christ and we would have understood he could have said Christ without putting Jesus and we would have understood he brought his name with his title 
He brought his nature with his name. He brought his attribute with his authority. He says, Jesus, the one who saves. And Christ, the anointed one that breaks every yoke. It brings his salvation and his deliverance together. His power and his authority together. His name and his nature together. And he tells you, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and he could have said tomorrow. But instead of saying tomorrow, he said, and tomorrow, plus tomorrow, plus tomorrow, until today, until tomorrow, until next week, forever, is still the same. That's why I come to you with confidence tonight. With assurance tonight. That something is going to happen to you. Are you blind? Get ready, something is coming your way. You're lame, you're on a stretcher, you're on wheelchair, you're on crutches. I'm telling you today, everybody say today, yeah. something is happening right there. Yeah. God's explosive power today. Uh, there are many things we can talk about when we talk about God's exclusive power. Three things. Number one, God's excellent plan of salvation. God's excellent plan of salvation. In that word excellent, I could have said God exceeding plan of salvation. I could have told you God's excelling plan of salvation. Nothing to add. Nothing to support. Nothing to modify. Nothing to say this is absent. Can we adjust this? Is the excellent, exceeding Excelling plan of salvation. That plan is for you. I said that plan is for you. It includes you. And you will not be missing in the fulfillment of that plan in Jesus' name. Number two, God's explosive power over sickness. Any form of sickness, any size, any shape of sickness. Long standing has been there for a long time. Explosive power, explosive authority, explosive anointing. It comes from which night? And when we pray, you hear me mention the name of Jesus. All that sickness tonight will vanish away in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. God's explosive power over sickness. Uh, let me say some that that explosive power. You know, there are people who sometimes you are sick and you are getting well, little by little by little, gradually and slowly, gradually and slowly. That one is not explosive. Explosive is instantaneous. It is immediate. I say it here. Explosion takes over there. All of a sudden. 
your bright eyes can see clearly. All of a sudden, your lame legs will receive strength. And then your deaf ears, I can hear. I can hear. When is that going to happen? I said, when will that happen? Tonight is your appointed time. God's explosive power over sickness. Number three now. Is God's expressed promise of satisfaction. God's expressed promise of sufficiency. That no matter where you are, no matter what the problem may be, there is a sufficiency of power here tonight that will bring satisfaction to every need of your life tonight. I congratulate you that you are here. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. Number one, God's excellent plan of salvation. The Lord knows you couldn't save yourself. How could you? You couldn't keep yourself alive. Neither can you bring yourself from spiritual death. Somebody has fallen into a well. And there is no ladder to bring him out. He doesn't have any wisdom, any strength, any way, any step to climb out. You need somebody outside that well to reach down in mercy and love and compassion and pull you out. You fall into the well of sea. You are doomed. You are damned. There's nothing you can do for yourself. Your self-effort cannot help you. Personal struggle cannot help you. But thank God there is a God in heaven. It's a God of redemption. It's a God of love. It's a God of mercy. He saw you where you were helpless. Somebody up there to help me. Somebody up there to get me out. And a voice comes from heaven. And he says, I am the Lord. Mighty to save. His salvation is available for you tonight. What you couldn't do for yourself. You cannot forgive all the sins you've committed by yourself. Neither can you cleanse yourself from the guilt of past sin. But God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. Beautiful word. Whosoever. Wonderful word. That whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I come to tell you tonight that the God of salvation included you in the plan. You can exclude yourself if you want to. You can say, no, I want to die in that well of sin if you wanted to. But the plan includes you. It's the plan of salvation. You will not reject it. It says, I'm the Lord, I will save you. I want to save you. I've done everything there is to do for you to be saved. He will save you. I said, He will save you. It was the major reason Christ came to this world. 
why will the almighty God send his beloved son to this world? Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. There's an angel talking to Joseph. Here is a messenger from heaven talking to Joseph. He didn't understand. How could he understand that Mary the virgin was pregnant? As a just man, he was thinking about that. And then the angel came and brought the information from heaven. And she shall bring forth not a daughter, but a son. And Joseph could tell how true that will be. Just a matter of months. And when the sun came forth, Joseph could reflect. The angel said so. She shall bring forth a son. If the first part of what is said was true, the next part must be real, must be factual, must be true. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You call him Jesus. When you call him Jesus, you call him Savior. All the sins we have committed. When we talk of sins. He is talking about things we do against God. Number one. Speak against God. Number one. Our actions, our habits that are contrary to the pleasure of God. Number two. Things we do against our neighbors. That offend our neighbors that disturb our neighbors we call them anti-social behavior it hurts others it doesn't help other people and nobody will say i've never done anything to hurt my neighbor i've never done anything that will displease god number one the things we do against God. Number two, the things we do against our neighbors. Number three, the things we do against our very selves. If somebody says, I'm not hurting anybody. Are you not hurting yourself? I'm smoking, I'm not hurting anybody. Are you not hurting yourself? I'm drinking. I know that they talk about drunkenness, but it's me. But are you not hurting yourself? Your greed. That is, you walk like an elephant. You eat like an ant. Are you not hurting yourself? The things we do against ourselves. The sin that drive us and hurry us up to premature death and to untimely death. The way we use our tongue, how we use our ears, how we use our mouth, the things we do with our hands that God says, that's not the purpose of the hand I gave you. It's not to hurt other people. It's not to destroy other people. And it is not to destroy yourself. Those are the things that are called sins. Against God, sin. Against your neighbor, sin. 
against yourself sin and the soul that sinneth it shall die it's a built in process of sowing and reaping that as you sow the wild oath you also reap the sons and the thistles as you sow the wind you reap the wild wind because what you reap the harvest is always greater than what you sow and now a lot of seeds that piled up the pile against your first sin against God is so high it almost reaches to the heavens And the ones you've done against your neighbor, one, two, three neighbors, and four neighbors, and five, and almost everybody, you know, somebody has somewhat against you. It reaches up to the heavens. <laughs> and the seeds you've sinned against yourself. It's like a heavy load upon you that bows you down and you cannot run the race of life. There's so much guilt and condemnation. But the plan of God's salvation that says, I can set you free. I can forgive you. Because I sent Jesus Christ to bear your punishment. Just come by faith. And as you believe, things will change in your life. Tonight I announce that plan of salvation unto you. That salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the plan, and that plan is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Our sin also brought sicknesses into the world. Before sin entered the world, before sin entered the world, there was no sickness. And then before the fall, did not know what you call sickness, demonic attack, oppression, hospital, whatever. It's after sin came that sickness also arrived. Because it's the consequence, is the fruit, is the harvest of the sowing of sin. And as the Almighty God has brought solution to the problem of sin, so he has brought solution to the problem of sickness. Double problem, double solution. Everything that the devil has brought into this world through our anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-social, anti-spiritual activities, Jesus Christ is going to solve the problem tonight. God's explosive power over sickness. In Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to read to you from verse 16 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 and 17. And as I read this, remember that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, 
today and forever that what he did at that time he is doing tonight if you were there at that time with your sickness affliction or infirmity he would have he would have healed you and the bible says it's the same yesterday today and forever congrats for being here tonight congratulations for being here tonight where are you i said where are you something good is going to happen to you give me a good good or should stay to amen Look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed of devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. He cast out the spirit with his word. You don't need any other thing. With his word. And tonight, when I come to point number three, I'll be telling you if you have any activity of Satan, of spirits, of sickness there, I'm going to speak the word of Christ from here instantaneously. Those things will go. He cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed. Tell me the next word there. He healed. I said, tell me the next word there. What does all mean? All means I am part of that. All means my name is there. All means that my miracle is there. Anybody excluded? Who are the people going to get it tonight? How many? How many? I said how many? And he, he that does not change. He who remains the same. He the same yesterday, today and forever. He healed all that was sick. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. That it might be fulfilled. Jesus has a commitment. The commitment is not to your crime. Lord, look at my tears. It doesn't, it's not committed to your crime. The commitment is not committed to Lord. I've given so much money. I've paid my tithes and offering. It's not committed to your tithes and offering. Is not committed to your drinking water. Water from Jordan, water from Jerusalem, water from the Red Sea, water from Syrian Sea. Is not committed to your drinking water. Is not committed to your anointing oil. He is committed to fulfilling the word that has been written concerning him. Whether you cry or you don't cry. Whether you have oil or you don't have oil. You have water, you don't have water. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. 
himself himself by stripes you are healed by the name of Jesus the power of his cross the power of his atonement because of what he has done to fulfill what I've been reaching concerning him he says because of that he carried all our infirmities he took away all our sicknesses they came they prayed they were healed they came they requested they were made whole and tonight is still the same as ever God's explosive power over sickness. Will it happen today? Will it happen to you? It's coming your way. Number three. God's expressed promise of satisfaction. Uh, you know, the promise of God is not something you'll say, well, I went there, I saw other people, the God's blessing, but me, I, I, I guess God has done enough. See what God has done. The air will breathe sufficient for everyone. The water in God's ocean sufficient for everyone. The ground on which we sow sufficient for every farmer. The parcel of land on which we build sufficient for everyone to have a shelter on his head. If every other sin is sufficient and satisfactory, how do you think the blessing of God will be less than that? You will get your share tonight. In John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am calm. It's there tonight. I am calm. It's right by your side. I am come that they might have life. We would have, that's sufficient. That's enough. I have come that they might have life. Eternal life. Spiritual life. Physical life. Happy life. Healthy life. A life that is free. Free to succeed. Free to move on. Lie, lie, without any subtraction of any good thing. I am come that they might have life. And then it says, and that they might have it more abundantly. Uh, have you noticed what is there? We can say, I'm come that they might have life, number one. Number two, I'm, I've come that they might have life abundantly. We would have said, Lord, thank you. You've done more than enough. I am come that they might have life. I am come that they might have life abundantly. He says, don't go yet. There's something else. I am come that they might have life more abundantly. And tonight is there for you. There is no discrimination. That's why he says, come unto me. 
all ye that labor and are heavy lady and I will give you rest I will give you life I will give you forgiveness I will give you salvation I will give you healing I will give you deliverance I will give you eternal life come and everything is available for you today is a God of salvation he has a plan of salvation and he has you in mind today there's a plan and power for healing any sickness in your life he can take away you will take away he has included you in the manifestation of that power and today there is a promise of satisfaction and sufficiency and has included you in the plan now whosoever will may come and the blessing of God is reaching you right now are you there I said are you there I said the blessing of God is reaching you right now in Jesus name let's bow the eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed. This is the moment of the beginning of his manifestation. He wants to forgive your sin. He wants to give you salvation. And then after that, he wants to give you healing. He wants to use the dynamite from heaven and blow away every infirmity, every sickness you have in your body, in your life. And this is a moment of decision. If you are asking that the first thing to be done, that is the plan of salvation. If you are saying, I want to recognize I am included in that plan. All sins forgiven, guilt taken away, condemnation taken away, eternal life given to you as a gift. And you say, yes, Lord God of salvation. I thank you for that plan of salvation. I am included in that plan of salvation. I want that salvation, forgiveness, eternal life right now. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. That's all it takes. It just wants your cooperation. To say, yes, I want your salvation. Where are you? Just raise up your hand. Salvation. Forgiveness. Eternal life. If you are raising up your hand, you'll stand up where you are. And then the salvation of the Lord will come to you right there. You're raising up your hand. Where are you? Where are you? you can, if you count out yourself, that's you. That's your fault. But if you say, I have part in that plan. Salvation, I'm included in that plan. Eternal life, I'm included in that plan. Tonight is the night of salvation for me. Whosoever comes to Christ, he will for no reason cast out. So just stand up. You are raising up your hand. You are saying, Oh Lord, here am I. I believe. Here am I. I accept. Here am I. I embrace your plan of salvation, including me. While you stand up, just quietly tell the Lord, Lord, I know I am a sinner. 
I cannot save myself. I've sinned against God. I've sinned against my neighbors. I've sinned even against myself. But I hear of your plan of salvation. That it includes me. Lord, I come. Forgive me. Cleanse my heart. Change my life. Grant me your salvation now. Lord, I believe you will not reject me. I believe that Jesus now is my Savior. Thank you, Lord. I pray the strength and the grace to live in newness of life. You grant unto me now. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at, that, at this time. Thank you for the plan of salvation that includes everyone all those who have come to you now from the depths of their hearts I pray that your salvation will be theirs in Jesus name grant them your forgiveness grant them your grace grant them your salvation Send them forth to live now by your power in newness of life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Your time of healing, deliverance, miracle has now come. It's coming your way. What are you there? How many are going to receive that miracle power tonight? Be it unto you according to your declaration in Jesus' name. If you are blind, you are lame, or deaf and dumb, or you have epilepsy, you have any swelling in your body? Goiter or hunchback? Elephantiasis, big leg. Water hair that is swollen for that child. Or cancer. Tuberculosis. Any kind of problem. Or so kidney that has a problem. Livers have any problem. The power of God is here tonight to blow that sickness away. I'm going to pray for you now. And I'm going to send the explosive power of the word into your life. Once you hear the final amen, that means it is so. Amen means let it be, it is so. So, after the final amen, if you were blind before, look up here, so the direction you are hearing sound, look up, you'll be able to see me. And then, if you are lame, you get up, you start walking. 
something swollen in your body check it up now see it because you won't see it again after this prayer you brought anyone in chase because they are mad after the prayer you loosen that chain everything will be all right You already where are you? It's coming your way. Where are you? Get ready now. Get ready now. The healing is in the power, authority, the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you'll never fail. Almighty God, we have declared already. You are God and you change not. Lord Jesus, we have declared it already. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I come assuring your people that you will not fail. That you cannot fail. I pray, O oh Lord, manifest your power to them now in Jesus' name. That big problem, that madness, the spirit of uh, madness, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those who are deaf and dumb. Spirit of deafness and spirit of dumbness, I command you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Those dumb people and those dead people begin to hear and begin to speak out. Lord, I pray for those who have any swell in their body. I command that goiter come out in Jesus' name. That hunchback be removed in Jesus' name. Elephant is swollen in your legs. I command, get out in Jesus' name. That are near there, I don't allow you to remain there. I command, be healed in Jesus' name. That big water head, I command that that water in the head will be drained out. That child will become normal. Everything that has taken possession of that head, the touch of the Lord is upon you now, be made whole in Jesus' name. That disease of cancer be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are blind. Touch those blind eyes right now. Touch those blind eyes right now. Remove the bandage of Satan and the blackness and darkness in their sight in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, legs paralyzed, hands withered, neck that cannot stand, head cannot stand on the neck. The vertebrae on the back, uh, the, the backbone that is not strong. I pray, Lord, touch them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. That short leg, I command that short leg, grow out right now in Jesus' name. Short hand, I command that shorter hand grow out in Jesus' name. Oh, 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 
and those who have any part of their body missing. I command that there will be a creative miracle right now. That those parts that are missing be created by the Lord, even in your body, in Jesus' name. Kidneys receive your healing. Livers receive your healing. All the lungs receive your healing. Lord, everywhere now, from the right to the left, from the front to the back, those who are inside, those who are outside, I send forth the miracle power upon every one of you now in Jesus' name. That explosive power of miracle be manifest in your life right now. Lord, I thank you because I know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, it is done. Amen, it is done. You can check up yourself now and see the manifestation of the power of God. If you are blind before, you are no more blind. Open your eyes and look and see. You had something swollen in your body before. Check it up. Now you are made whole. And any, any condition you had before, check up. Do what you couldn't do before. You have got your miracle. 